Adventure is in my blood. Finding treasures big or small and having fun is what it's all about. With my wife, Melissa, and our three kids, life is pretty full. But there isn't a mountain we can't climb together. This isn't your ordinary antique store. My name is Alex Archibald, and this is Curiosity Inc. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's episode. We are at the Hotel Halifax, enjoying some breakfast with the kids and the wife. Hi. <laughs> and uh, we're going on an adventure today. We're going to drive along the coast to Lunenburg. But on the way, we're stopping at my friend Ryan's place. He's got a barn full of antiques. He's a picker in this area. We're going to stop in to see him and see if perhaps there's some cool collectibles to pick up. But um, I don't know, it should be a pretty good adventure. We're going to go along the coast, see some things that we saw last year. Um, but today's adventure should be fun. You're going to see some beautiful things, so follow along with us today as we go on another, pick another adventure of Curiosity Inc. Hey Jason, show everyone the size. That's the tiniest, I'm going to show a comparison there. That's the tiniest little itsy bitsy glass of orange juice I've ever seen. I guess it's portion control here at the buffet. Ryan's place is not too far from the historic and lovely town of Chester, which gives the family a perfect opportunity for some sightseeing as we stop at the black market in Chester. And I am going to look across the street because I spot a really cool little Willie's Jeepster sitting over there. Lovely little town, lots of shopping to do. We've got to start our sightseeing. Let's see if I can catch up with Melissa. Hey guys. This is great, Mom, but where are the children? Right there. Okay, we're here, and it looks like he's definitely uh, up the ante of his pick, and he's got lots of stuff, so we're gonna check it out. But look, <laughs> that's what we're going into right now check out Ryan's barn. So Ryan has been picking for a while now, and he's got his uh, buddies. You guys work together, do you? Sure. All right. I see you've got part of what would have been a killer John Deere sign. And I was saying earlier, I was looking at that. If your name's John Farm, well, there's a sign for you. That should have been, oh, a fair bit longer, and it would have said John Deere Farm Implements and had the running deer in the middle. And it's a pretty expensive sign when you have the whole thing. But even for 100 bucks, I mean, somewhere you're going to find the rest of that and go, oh, I should have kept it. But... It's cool. So we got to check it out. You've been busy this whole time. I can see this is a lot more involved than what it was last time I was here. Yeah, I just got back from a trip from uh, British Columbia, actually, across the country and found lots of treasures and goodies along the way. So, Well, I see that. Well, we're going to have to have a look around. Yeah, please do. Now, if I find some stuff, I might have to see if you can ship. <laughs> okay, well, let's have a look-see. Look a little Titanic. And it's still in one piece. That's pretty cool, isn't it, Jason? Yeah. Hey Steven, do you see the little Titanic? I did now. It's pretty cool. It is really neat. We've got some little toy cars. That's some old matchbox in there. These could come in handy. These are little uh, latches. Possibly good for general store cabinetry. I don't know if the other part of it's there or how that clasps, but that's pretty, pretty neat though. A bunch of dead stuff. <laughs> kind of like coyotes or foxes. Let's see. Oil cans. That William Penn would have been a good one. If it was still in. <laughs> okay, who's that? Who's that for, Melissa? Let's see, what are you holding up by Steven? What does it say? <laughs> it said poisonous yeah. gas. Oh. <laughs> Upside down. Yeah, well, actually looks kind of cool. I think any of the boys might need that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, these, well. I've had these cans before. They're actually, they're, I hate to say, kind of cool. Uh, look at the little graphics there. Poor little gopher. And there's gopher cop. I've had that one. White rose. Now, in the world of more collectible stuff that's here, the white rose pails are a little rare. But of course, condition plays a, a big role. There's a red head pail. You look at it and go, yeah, okay, well, it's an unusual 
piece you don't see too often, but look, the bottom's completely rusted out. It's too bad. This one has kind of a, that's a whiz can. Clean flush for cooling. That would be really good graphics on that. Conditions everything though, so you gotta buy the stuff in the best shape you can find. You guys wanna go have a look inside the barn? Yes. Okay, let's go have a look. Now, last time I was here, I ended up picking up a bunch of uh, old porcelain uh, license plates and some other cool stuff from Ryan. So I'm hoping to find some other interesting, unusual things that we can bring back this go around. But uh, judging from what we see outside, I'm sure there's gonna be just as much good stuff, if not better in. Let's go have a look. Hey, the car's gone. There was a, last time I was in here, there was a sob. Well, cause I, I was gonna, I was thinking about buying it as a problem. Ah, you might have been. Pick and pay. Right, the sign's all ready to go. There's some old bottles. High cap. Some brands I have not seen before. Evangeline, first for thirst. Okay, I do see some early plates. Okay, Ryan, I gotta ask you, what are you, what are you looking for out of your old porcelain plates over here? I'm uh, sure we can make a deal. Okay. This is the sort of stuff I'm looking for. So they would call this a porcelain plate. Now it's not porcelain like the dinnerware that you would eat off of. A lot of people get that confused. In some countries you'd call this enamel. In our area we call it porcelain or porcelain enamel. It's an applied glass over top of steel that's then baked to a hard finish. This would have been uh, what they used, as you can see, 1915 or so. Uh, they later just went to steel or emboss plate. So these are early, they're more collectible and a little bit tougher to find. And uh, in an area like this that was less populated, around that time there was less cars equals less plates. So we'll see if we can strike a deal. Okay, so we have struck a deal. He's been kind to me. We ended up getting a stack of not perfect, but still rare porcelain license plates. Two, three, four, five, six. There's six of them there. So uh, we're going to have a look around and see what else we can find. Is it okay if I just stack these somewhere while I'm looking? For sure. Start a pile. Start a pile. I got to consider how much <laughs> luggage space I have. At least plates don't take up much room. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. So how on earth did you get the Lieutenant Governor of New Brunswick's license plate? It, I, it was someone else? It wasn't easy. I, oh, it wasn't easy. No. I actually... Entered in a trade with another heavy collector from uh, New Brunswick. Wow! And so, what's a plate like that worth? Two, three hundred dollar range. Okay. Well, I mean, there's not too many like it. You can't. Not anybody has a license plate with the crown on it. <laughs> now that is a cool chandelier. It's solid brass. Has sort of these um, mermaids coming up from the bottom of it to the top, and it's like she's her arms become the chandelier, the candelabra, really neat piece. It's probably, so are you all year? Oh, I don't know how old this is, but that's a really interesting no, piece. Yeah. Ryan's got a pretty good eye for what to buy. And uh, I can tell you, there's a lot of stuff here I'd be interested in bringing back. The problem is, um, I'm gonna I probably have to ship the bigger stuff. License plates I can fit inside of a bag, no problem. But some of the bigger things like that chandelier, which incidentally is sold, that'd be a fantastic piece. I'd love that. <laughs> but bringing that back is gonna be a little bit difficult. But I'm gonna have a look and see what else he's got here. I'm sure I'm gonna find some other things too. Well, there's a well-equipped kid. He's got the helmet on. He's got the gas mask. He must've been near Steven's bedroom, <laughs> according to Melissa's sign. That guy's had his last cigar. Look up to the ceiling and there's this old gambling game, a chance wheel. Um, price is not bad. He's asking 200, 200 bucks for it. What's interesting about it is that uh, it's actually a wooden rim bicycle wheel that they've built the game around. So if you're looking for a wood rim bike wheel, which are sometimes difficult to find, um, that would get you. Sadly, it's really rusty though. So you can see these spokes are pretty worse for wear. But for the price, it's not bad. Sadly, it won't fit in a bag. I see that he's got another one there too. Cool looking thing. I see Jason found the upstairs. Yeah, before you. Before me. Oh, there's lots of horns. Hey, Jason, we could hook you up to this. You could pull a cart around the yard for us. Why would I do that? I don't know. 
So that's what kids do. They pull carts around like they're oxes. Hey, look at this trunk. That's really neat. Red, white, and blue paint scheme. That is a very nautical looking trunk. Don't think we could take that as carry-on. That's a cool piece, so I like it quite a bit. We could ship it back. Well, you know, but it, it does give you an idea of what you can do in terms of painting to make a trunk look interesting too, because any trunk can be painted like that, but that one's already got the right kind of age and patina to it. It's pretty neat. Let's see what else there is. Sometimes you just look for things that capture your imagination. Like this part of an old sword. Probably was in the ocean or buried. See how that's corroded along there? That was definitely dug up and the, there's really nothing left of the handle. All the wood and leather is rotted away. Little bottles. All kinds of neat little things. It's a big copper bowl. Just cram packed full of stuff in here. Well, if I was closer to home and not having to fly out on an airplane tomorrow, I would certainly be making an offer on that trunk behind me. It's a really cool piece. I think it's got the right kind of aesthetic. I'm sure he'll have no trouble selling it. So let's saw this uncut. Uh, this is when Pepsi first started doing uh, pop cans or soda cans. But really uh, early sort of graphic for them or fairly early. You know, it's probably from maybe the, the 1970s. They've been doing cans for probably about 10 years or so by then, but it's an uncut sheet of cans. Kind of an interesting thing. Use it as siding or whatever you want to do. <laughs> There's all sorts of neat stuff. The problem is a lot of the things that I'm liking are bigger um, or they're oil cans and you can't take oil cans on an airplane. Right now, all I've bought so far has just been the, uh, all I've bought so far has been the license plates. But I mean, that's a start. I'm going to keep looking around. Hey, Steven, you see anything cool? I just got up here, but so far, there seems to be some neat stuff. I was saying that that uh, ma kid mannequin downstairs with the gas mask, oh. after mom gave you that sign. <laughs> oh. Uh-huh. What do you think of this trunk? It's pretty cool. I know. It's too big to bring back, though. Found a couple little items. A really odd hood ornament of a jockey. And rival twist chewing tobacco. This is from Charlottetown, PEI. We were just on the island. So it's local to this area. Pretty neat. Going through this box of old, really old license plates, came across this. This is a 1908 Nova Scotia motorcycle license plate. 74 probably means there's only 74 other motorcycles on the road in the whole entire province at that time. Um, really early, really rare piece. It is motorcycle. Um, asking price, $5,000. It's probably what it's worth but I don't think I can justify that one today as much as I'd love to have it. Really cool, I'm gonna put that right back where I found it, right back in the box. And you never know what you're gonna find when you come to a spot like this from an outhouse door to a sign from a seafood restaurant uh, or even a coffin-shaped guitar case. <laughs> Nothing says I'm a rebel like coming into a concert with your guitar in a coffin-shaped case. <laughs> Even John Wayne probably thinks that's cool. Gosh, even this old folk art light fixture is really cool. Look how they painted the vines all the way around. Someone would have spent some real time on that. Neat, neat, neat. Yeah, well, thanks very much. Thanks for coming. Got a good haul of stuff. Yeah, Always good, good to see you. Again. Yeah, and this is the uh, second year in a row I've been out to the East Coast. For sure, and I'm thinking I'll probably be in the Edmonton area in September, so I'll look you up. Oh, I should have my new store by then, too. Absolutely. Yeah, so you gotta come check it out. And I gotta show you the last thing that I picked up from him, too. This is from a carnival, a little fortune teller head. It's uh, creepy and cool at the same time. Just the sort of thing you don't see and always the sort of thing I'm looking for. So thanks so much again, Ryan. Thanks, buddy. Good to see you. Cheers.